I want us to be spiritually enabled because I do believe, and I think it's part of our tradition, that if the heart is angled right, then everything else will fall into place. <clears throat> Number one, the Prophet wasallam says, Ibghuni fi du'afa. Seek me out amongst the weak. Seek me out amongst the poor. Now, typically speaking, the word du'afa is translated as weak, but what it really means is vulnerable. It's not that a person is weak, but rather a person is vulnerable in their society. And the Prophet said, seek me out amongst the vulnerable. You will always find me amongst the vulnerable of your society. فَهَلْ تُرْزَقُونَ وَتُنْصَرُونَ إِلَّا بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ Are you granted victory or help or sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by the way that you treat the most vulnerable of your society? What that means is that we have, as part of our philosophical understanding of the way the world works, what's embedded in our religion is this idea that Allah treats us the way that we treat our most vulnerable as an ummah. So if we are good to our most vulnerable, then we, who as a whole, antum al ila Allah, you are those that are completely dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in need of Allah. When you are in need of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be in your service. And Allah is in the service of the believer as long as he is in the service of his brother. We also take this concept from the Qur'an, various concepts, various times in the Qur'an, particularly when it comes to the orphan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Fajr, He tells us about the whining and the complaining of an individual in their own life, about why life is giving them a bad end or a good end, and how they're equating their sustenance or their measure of worldly success with their success in the, high, in, the, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or whether or not Allah is pleased with them. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعْعَمَ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that verily man, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests him, not with a stroke, not with losing his job, not with any family tragedy, when Allah tests you with sustenance and Allah tests you with honor, and Allah tests you with a good reputation that you suddenly have to live up to. When Allah tests you with ease, فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا This is what's called the prosperity doctrine. That person says, my Lord has been generous with me. My Lord has honored me. My Lord has made me dignified and noble. And he's not saying this in the context of وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ Which is to say, Alhamdulillah and thank Allah for the blessings upon you. He's saying it in the context of boasting. Just like the man with two gardens in Surah Al-Kahf, who thinks to himself that because I'm doing well in this life, that is to be equated with the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with me. وَلَئِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي And even if I meet Allah on the Day of Judgment, then I'll find even better than what I found in this world. So when Allah tests you with ease, you say, my Lord has given me dignity and honor and made me noble. وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَا بَتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا That same individual, if Allah tests him by restricting his sustenance, by taking away his job, reducing his salary, by a little bit of hardship in regards to his or her reputation, that person turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, رَبِّي أَهَانًا my Lord has humiliated me. In essence, they blame God for their misfortunes rather than blaming them, their own selves, and they become bitter and dejected towards religion and towards faith. There are some people that worship Allah on an edge. If things are good, they stay. If things are bad, they spiritually jump off the cliff. They leave the religion. So they equate their religion with their worldly success, their own measure of worldly success, and worldly uh, failure. What does Allah answer this person? Kalla balla tukrimun al yatim. Allah says, You don't deserve to be honored because you don't honor the orphan. You don't deserve honor and dignity in this life because you don't dignify the orphan. Kalla balla tukrimun al yatim. Wala tahabuna ala ta'am al miskin. And you do not seek out to feed the poor, to make way for the poor. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you don't deserve goodness in this life because you are not showing it to those that are vulnerable. 
Now realize it's very, it's, it's very uh, uh, se sequential in, this, in, this, in these ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions risk, sustenance, and dignity. Allah mentions that a person, when they're given money, they say, Alhamdulillah, Allah is giving me money. And when they're given fame or success or reputation, they would say that Allah has honored me. Which one of the two is more important? Which one does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prefer? Which one does Allah say is more important? Before Allah says, وَلَا تَحَادُونَ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ you, you don't feed the poor person. Allah says, you fail to dignify and honor the orphan. Meaning, ikram al yatim to honor the orphan. So Allah connected it to your own desire to be honored. And Allah connected your own desire to be wealthy with your effort or lack thereof of feeding people that are in far more dire need than you are.